I don't know about you guys, but uh, I feel like I'm being watched. <gasps> Definitely something there. Something just beyond my peripherals. A distinct, malevolent presence gazing upon my, my every move. Always watching. Always waiting. <laughs> How long must I hold this pose? Ugh, my arthritis is acting up. Damn it, Larry! You weren't supposed to break character until after the intro. Ugh, I knew I should have used those candles for a romantic dinner instead. Can I get the 20 bucks I was promised? Uh, I'm only gonna give you 10 because you messed up. Ugh, fair enough. Anywho, I think we've all experienced at a young age that distinct fear of what lurks in the shadows, which I've hopefully depicted quite accurately, aside from a hey what- HEY NO! I 20 bucks! Whether it be from our imagination or something more sinister, you might find that the monsters, demons, and apparitions from our childhoods never quite left our subconscious memories, even as adults. So I asked members of the community to dig up from their past what they saw. <clears throat> What they absolutely feared when the lights went off during bedtime. And I'm honestly surprised at how much detail some people remember. Some descriptions quite disturbing. Especially from those that experienced sleep paralysis. So with these vivid recollections, I'm gonna try and bring these monsters to life. Our first answer is perhaps cliche, but still very creepy. You know that girl from the ring? Yeah, her. But with dry hair and kinda curly. She used to hunt me in my sleep when I was little and even if I never saw the ring, I was scared as fuck. She would try and talk to me and stuff, appearing randomly in my dream and just scaring me until I woke up. Some demons are recorded to be less than human. I do have sleep paralysis, and what the creature does is stare at me while I'm just laying on the bed, and I can't move. I stare back until 4 o'clock, and then it disappears. It looks like a big black dog looking creature, like an SCP. It also has big horns and red eyes. It does nothing but sit on top of me and stare at me for hours. Next we have a distressing account of a creature actually causing physical harm to this person. I'm shaking just from remembering the thing. I would see a black figure with multiple arms and eyes staring at me in the corner of my bedroom. It would stay there for hours at most. I wouldn't be able to sleep because of it repeatedly getting closer every time I closed my eyes. One night I was so tired to the point where I passed out for five minutes while I was there. Then when I woke up, it was on top of me. It crushed my legs and it really hurt. Weeks later, after being traumatized by it, I went to the doctor and got my legs checked. My leg had almost been cracked fully. My left leg had a crack slash bone snap in it. It wasn't there before. I had to wear a brace for three months. Here we have quite a strange description. He claims to see a mass of tentacles whose center point looked like a clown. Oh. Now, I feel like there's an important distinction here. He didn't say the center point was a clown, he said it looked like a clown. So I could interpret this as having a face of a clown or even being dressed like one, but I'm just gonna go with a clown-like silhouette since people tend to usually only see the vague shadow in the dark when they talk about sleep paralysis demons. Speaking of which, people usually either dismiss them as psychological or believe that they're actual demons or whatever. But what if they're both? 
Like what if these demons cannot physically manifest themselves, but they can tap into our minds when we go into sleep paralysis and then project themselves within. So they aren't physically present, but they use our minds as projectors. Sounds ridiculous, I know, but it's an interesting thought. Here we have someone who has experienced multiple apparitions. I could always feel the first one's aura roaming around my house. Just this dark being with little glowing eyes, taller than my door. I also had protective winged jaguars who would protect me if I behaved, but if I f***ed up, they could kill me. I was a weird kid. Okay, so these winged guardian jaguars or whatever they watch over you, but if you like didn't do your homework or something, they would kill you? Like, kill you in a dream? I don't know, you were a weird kid. And I'd say these answers are getting disturbingly weirder as we go on. We will protect you, young one. Hold on. To eat her vegetables. Well, in that case. That was a weird one, but I think we've got something even weirder. I once had a weird occurrence of having a sort of hallucination of a really rundown and broken Mickey Mouse. He was all distorted and really messy with bits of dirt, rust, and other things covering him. He had a human-like figure, but it was like he was starved, and now you could visibly see his bones through his skin. Ugh, his face had both human and mouse features. His eyes and mouth were human, but had a rat's teeth and nose. He wasn't wearing gloves, his hands were basically long, sharp black daggers. He also wasn't wearing shoes, his feet were similar to his hands. Uh, if that ain't creepy as hell, then I don't know what is. So that was taking a look at some of the things that haunted you in the past. And I think this goes to show that fear can come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. From fat to skinny, human to inhuman, and some things in between, I think if we take a step back, we can come to embrace the weird and demented as something quite fascinating. And hello, Rocco. How goes that?